I've realized adulthood is just one big checklist. And I don't know if maybe that's because I tend to make a lot of to-do lists. Uh, So maybe it's my own fault. But why do I feel like my existence is merely just checking things off? It's like, oh, I've solved that problem. Time to solve this problem. For example, I am currently in charge of the utilities bills in my situation, my living situation. Um, And I guess if you're in a share house situation, like you're not always in charge of the utilities bills, like there's a designated person that kind of is in charge of dealing with all of that. And then maybe there's somebody in charge who's dealing with the rent, whatever your situation may be. Um, You can't unfortunately avoid finances, but which is fine. It's responsibility. It's adulthood. It's important, right? But I nearly lost it with this crap because for two of the providers that I was going with, one was for internet, one was for like gas or something. And I know, I know what you're going to say. Why don't you just go with the same one provider so then you don't have to hassle with different providers and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, if you go with the one provider, you probably will end up paying more, I think. And maybe sometimes they're not as like, I don't know, green, environmentally friendly. And so you should go for places that are better. And I don't know. Look, (laughs) I get it. It makes, it makes more sense to just go with one provider for all your bills. But sometimes you don't, you don't do that because it's cheaper and it's better to go with different providers. Anyway, one provider for my internet, they were like, oh, we've sent you an email for the invoice, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I haven't received the email. Like, I don't understand. Like, can I check what email you have? And they were like, oh, the email was wrong. Like, let's fix that. And I was like, okay, good, good, good. So then they fixed the email and they're like, okay, we sent you another email. I never received the email. And I was like, I don't understand. How am I not receiving the email? And they're like, did you check junk mail? I was like, yes, I've checked junk mail. And they're like, well, we keep sending you the email. So like, I'm not sure what's happening here. And then I was like, can you send something to my phone number to like see if that works instead? And my phone number worked. So now I don't understand why that provider can't email me. So I don't really understand that. Then this other provider for gas was like, we've sent you an email of the invoice, but your email isn't working. And I was like, I actually can't do this. Like, why? (laughs) What is wrong with my email? Why can no provider email me my invoices? I'm like, well, if I never receive the bill, guess I'm never paying it. No, I'm kidding. Um, and so the, yeah, the gas provider was like, we've sent you an email, like you should have gotten your invoice for blah, blah, blah. And I checked my email and there's no email for, actually, no, this was for water. And and I received no email for water. And I was like, where, where is this email? And like, did you check junk? And I was like, yes, I checked junk. Meanwhile, you have to deal with all of this while you're doing a full-time job. So like, Half the time I'm trying to manage the fact that I have a full-time job and then also the fact that I'm trying to deal with my living situation and having to like deal with these responsibilities and trying to juggle the two and it makes me want like my head explode, right? And so obviously I wasn't able to take like a phone call during work for dealing with the fact that I wasn't receiving this water bill. So I use their customer service thing online, like, you know, there's chat things where they're like someone's online you can chat to them I had to do this about five times because the connection to the chat kept getting lost so every time I would start a new chat with this person they were called like Sky or something and they were like hi my name is Sky how can I help you today and I'm like hi Sky it's me again I lost you in the other chat (laughs) And they were like, yeah, that's fine, Alice. Like, can you walk me through your details again? This happened about five times. So poor Sky, every time I opened the chat box, I was like, hi, it's me again. Sorry, I lost you, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Please help me. Anyway, thankfully, all was sorted. Apparently, they were able to send me the email of the invoice. I don't know why it worked that time and not for the internet people. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Maybe there's a setting on my my email that's like, oh, I don't know. 
Anyway, so I've just come to this realization that life is just one big checklist because it's like I've sorted all those problems, but then it's like, well, what are my next problems going to be? Like something else is going to happen where I'm going to have to solve that problem and that responsibility. And it's like, is my life just one endless list of responsibilities? Like every week, right? I'm like, okay, it's a Sunday. I got to do my groceries for the week. I've got to um, do my washing for the week. And then it gets to a Friday again. And after I've used all my groceries and I've used all my clean clothes and I'm like, oh my God, like the cycle begins again. I got, I got, it's a Sunday night. I got to do my groceries and I got to wash my clothes. And I'm like, is this it? Is this the rest of my life is just constantly getting to the end of a work week and being like, well, it's all over again. I got to wash my clothes, get my groceries and do a full week of work. This probably sounds really depressing because I'm just sending myself into like a full existential crisis, but it's just like the idea that it's like I have to do this for the rest of my life. Like surely there is more. (laughs) Like surely this isn't it. (laughs) I'm kidding. I love my life. I, I truly do. I really, I actually really love my life. It's just sometimes when you are in that full time routine of five days at work, you know, cooking, cleaning, uh, bills, all this, uh, maintaining a social life, trying to maintain a love life. Not that I have much of that anymore. Um, All of that, you just think, wow, like this is it. This is adulting. And now I have to maintain this for the next 60, 70 years of my life. And that is terrifying. So... (laughs) Another realization I had this week was I actually have no problem talking about the weather. Like, I feel like it's become this thing that people don't want to just like have small talk or just talk about the weather with people, but I fucking love it. I love just talking about the weather sometimes with people. And I got to be honest, small talk is sometimes like spam email in like real time. Like, I feel like... small talk can really just be like spam that needs to go to the junk inbox like really it is but when you need to do small talk like just in certain situations it fucking the weather is a great thing to talk about and now living in Melbourne you can always fucking talk about the weather and I swear to god this is how every conversation in Melbourne goes about the weather you'll wake up on like a work uh, like a working day and it will just like be pissing down with rain and everyone will come into work being like, oh gosh, the weather, the weather, yeah, it's so bad. Like, ha ha ha, like, you know, it's raining. But then we'll all go, oh, but like, you never know in like two hours because it's Melbourne, it might be sunny again. And then in two hours, it's literally sunny again. And you're like, ha ha ha, that's Melbourne for you. That's literally every conversation. But I love it. I love how repetitive it is and how like, because I guess it is just like, kind of optimistic as well since you live in Melbourne and it's like you'll be met with like these horrible wetty days in the morning and then like afternoon the sun will come out and you're all just like oh like four seasons in a day like how good is this like blah 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 um so yeah I have no issue talking about the weather really it is it is a great passing the time kind of conversation Okay, so today I want to talk about Beyonce, but more specifically, and I I think I want to not make this a series, but do this with like, because I love talking about music um, and I've taken breaks here and there from talking about it just because I do think it can get kind of exhausting talking about art because sometimes I just want to enjoy it and I don't want to like intellectualize it or just like dissect it like sometimes I like I even found this last night I was watching Interstellar because I'd never seen it before which how bad is that um and I actually haven't seen many Christopher Nolan movies I wouldn't say he's like my go-to director um but I will say the whole like joke about it's hard to hear what his characters say in his movies is very true uh his sound design is is fantastic in his movies but Um, sometimes you can't hear what certain characters are saying in some scenes and they kind of mumble and it's a bit confusing. So I did have to use subtitles. But anyway, I was watching Interstellar and I was thinking this movie is incredible. Uh, It talks about really interesting things, both in the sense that the world 
is is dying because of you know climate change and the environment and things that we're doing to the earth that could then lead to this like dystopian future where we can no longer live on earth and we need to find another planet to like inhabit and so it was a really interesting concept and then also the idea of time and how precious time is and how precious time is with loved ones and the idea that we could like lose that um also the idea of love and and that love is more powerful than the time continuum that you know you can love someone even if you spend a small portion of your life with them they can still mean something so great and that's how powerful love is so there was lots of interesting aspects to the movie and obviously Matthew McConaughey incredible actor Anne Hathaway so and um Jessica Chastain um so incredible movie but I almost was like stopping myself from dissecting it because I was like I just want to enjoy it I don't want to think about oh how would I make this a podcast how would I talk about this because I would say I truly am tortured by what I love to do which is podcasting or, or I guess telling stories or giving my opinion on things like I am someone who enjoys that but it's almost like I'm also tortured by it because it's like I can't just sit and enjoy things sometimes because I'm constantly thinking how would I make this a piece of content or a story or a a conversation with somebody um yeah it is it's a a blessing and a curse I guess so as I was saying Beyonce I kind of want to do this where I pick some of like my famous my my favorite performances by artists maybe both in film movies I've already kind of done it with books like giving book reviews um but in terms of musical performances there's a lot out there but there are definitely a list of performances that I hold very highly because of how flawless they are or how memorable they are and one of and I'll start with this one because I think it's a great opening one And for me, Beyonce, there's a video of her and I tried to find where she actually did the performance, but I I actually can't. So if you type in Beyonce Crazy in Love live and it was 2011 and it's the official live video for Crazy in Love. So this was published specifically on the channel to be like the official video for Crazy in Love minus the just like music video. Um... And the reason I'm choosing this one is because it is one of my favorite live videos to watch of a performer. And again, I've said this before, Beyonce is not someone that I regularly listen to. Like her her kind of recorded tracks are not something I play regularly, but she definitely has tracks and albums that I am like, they're very good. Um, for me, what really fascinates me for her is is her as a performer and this particular video to me is just so incredible because every single moment that she's performing in that song is deliberate and I think sometimes there's good and bad with being deliberate as a performer like you'll watch some people and They're not overthinking about I should put my hand here and I should sing like this in this phrase and I should make eye contact in that moment or I should be thinking about this thing when I sing that line. Like not every performer is like that and I also think being very perfectionist about your performance is not going to inherently make you a good one Um, because maybe you could come across as robotic and not having feeling or passion there's just kind of like you're just making every move you're just kind of hitting every point to fit the sequence but you're not actually giving an emotional performance um but for me Beyonce is doing that but there's so much emotion and passion there that it kind of evens out like even though she's being entirely perfectionist there's still so much emotion and passion that it just, it works. Um, so I'm kind of going to walk through this this four-minute video, um, breaking down each moment that I just, 
I want you to go watch the video. Maybe watch it before this and watch it after this just to like really like take in the amazingness of it all. So the opening starts with a close-up shot of her face and Beyonce says, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to be entertained? And the way she says this when she's looking down the barrel of the camera, it's not a question, it's a statement. She's not asking, okay, guys, are you ready? She's like, you are fucking ready. And I just feel like that sets up the performance already to show how in control she is. Um, And of course, you've got the famous wind machine. And I feel like every performer kind of has their like gimmicks that they carry throughout the years of their performing life. And for Beyonce, the wind machine has always, I mean, it's been used by hundreds of performers, but for Beyonce, she, she doesn't just have a wind machine. She has a wind machine and she has hairography. Like the way she moves her hair, the way she moves her body, like the wind machine is working for her and with her. It's not like it's just blowing shit into her face. So the start of Crazy in Love comes in with its crescendo, like da da na 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 na, na right? The famous, the famous beat. And the camera zooms out of Beyonce at this point, And we see she's wearing like this halter neck dress that's like silver and it's like glistening off the lights. And she kind of is wearing like this long trail skirt at the back. She then takes her leg, puts it in front and swivels to the back to face the back of the stage, which has like a staircase. So then when she's facing the back, she starts swiveling her skirt back and forth to the beat. And as she's stepping forward, each step is deliberate. It's not like she's just like walking to the staircase. Every single step is on beat as she makes her way up the stairs. So she continues this movement as she walks up the staircase. Noticeably, her head does not dip down. She's not looking where she's going. She is maintaining just like looking to the back. She's not looking down and being like, oh, am I stepping up the staircase, right? Like, I don't want to trip. Like, none of that. You don't get any kind of hesitation. It is each step she is getting further and further up the staircase. We also hear Jay-Z's intro come in on the track, which while it's great to have a live band and it would have been nice to have Jay-Z there live as well because like I've seen her perform this live with Jay-Z live as well and it is nice but I also think as a solo performance this is still quite powerful. So Beyonce reaches the top of the staircase and swivels to the front. She then pushes her head to one side and flips her hair over and again she looks straight into the barrel of the camera and she says you ready again she says it as a statement not a question which just it just the whole eye contact and the way she's phrasing certain things that level of control I feel like people don't realize is is really powerful because as an audience you can always tell always tell when a performer is nervous when they are slightly insecure when they're hesitant We see everything. We see every flaw, every misstep. I think that's what makes performing so vulnerable is because we're the first ones to realize, oh, they did that wrong. And I think, honestly, when I used to do singing live and stuff, obviously not on the same level, I always thought, oh, like no one probably noticed that mistake I made, which like in the grand scheme of things, I don't think people notice like all the time but I do think that the audience definitely sees everything and even when you make a mistake that you think they didn't notice I almost guarantee that at least one person saw it so and I'm not here to make people feel insecure I'm just saying that like I feel like Beyonce is very aware that she is under a microscope right now and every movement she's making is within perfection um And so, again, she tips her head to one side. She says, you're ready. The beat then drops into the uh uh uh-oh, 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 that bit. And um, Beyonce flips her body up and down as she's embodying the sound at this point. Like, she is moving her body 
to the sound as if it's within her. You can feel the passion truly even even though she's just like up on stage with this like thousands of people in the crowd like you just feel her embodying the entire sound she then does this classic one two three four counting which is very like we know what that means it means the beat's going to come in for crazy in love and again it just com- continues that that command that she has in both the song and the live performance and then again, we have the beat come back in with the da, 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 right? And Beyonce is gesturing to the crowd as if she's a conductor. Like you see the way that her hands move towards the audience and it's as if she is conducting the audience. So verse one begins and she again stares right down the camera and you can hear every breath and accent she makes on each phrase. She's accentuating all all her lyrics. She's being really forward with her singing in this moment. And she does this throughout the entire performance. She does this in most performances where the way that she sings, it's not down the back of her throat. She's always quite forward. And doing this when you're live is so important because it means your vocals don't get muddy. People can hear exactly what you're saying. They can hear every single word. And Again, while some performers, it may come across as robotic and unemotional, the way that Beyonce does it, it feels very passionate and it feels very commanding and the, the emotion doesn't get lost. Let's also talk about her face for a second. Not only is she obviously beautiful, but the way that she it's it's as if she has control over every muscle in her body even down to her eyebrows like the way that she raises her eyebrows or twitches her eye sometimes on certain lyrics like she allows every single mannerism to be controlled by her it's not as if her eye just accidentally twitched or her eyebrow accidentally raised in that moment like she is controlling every muscle in her face in her body in her arms in her legs like she is completely dictating how she is presenting herself as she performs this and you really see this in the close-up shots of her performing because you just see the way her face moves to every lyric and and word and it's just it is incredible seeing that another thing to note is you can really tell a seasoned performer by the way that they're holding the microphone and you might think but she's a seasoned performer of course she knows how to use a microphone it's like there are still people who have performed all their life and they still don't know how to use a microphone and you can see it um and obviously sometimes they use like they're not even using handheld mics and using a handheld mic when you're doing the kind of dancing that she's doing because you would think you would I would watch that in uh, as maybe an audio engineer or as a choreographer and be like you know what let's not give her a handheld mic let's give her a mic that can just sit on her face so that she doesn't have to think about it but in a way it's kind of great seeing that old school like she's holding a microphone And no matter how much she's flailing her body around, the microphone is always angled perfectly towards her face and the distance that she maintains between the microphone and her mouth is always consistent and she only moves it away when she needs to, when it's it's needed. Um, But she does not fumble that mic around as if she doesn't know what she's doing and that's always so incredible to see and I know that people are going to be like oh but like they're a performer or like they're a a professional they should know how to do that but it's like sometimes the basics uh, the 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 foundational requirements are kind of lost in things sometimes because people are so focused on all the dramatics that those basics are just kind of left behind and it, it is refreshing to always see artists that maintain that uh ability to have good audio and have a good vocal live a good live vocal performance by being able to use the microphone properly so once the fi- the first verse is done Beyonce is still up on the stairs and she does this thing where she looks down once and she sees the side of her skirt where she's got to unpin it to do this next move where she does like a dress change she looks down unpins the skirt and does one seamless unpin so then she can take off 
the trail of the dress. In this moment, Beyonce could have fumbled and lost the clip to unpin it on her skirt, but again, she nails it in one go before she has to do like a step ball change to the front, back, and side, and then goes into the chorus. And this movement where she takes off her skirt is just seamless, and it's so, I love it. It's like perfect. It's, ugh. So Beyonce throws the skirt off and does this waltz down the staircase, moving her hips back and forth, again, keeping eye contact with the audience. She does not trip in this moment. And walking in kitten heels down a staircase with blaring lights flashing with that much precision is really fantastic because I think she does one look down when she reaches like further down the staircase, but she doesn't do it in a moment that takes it you out of the performance. Like you don't even notice that she looks down. It's just so, so seamless. Once Beyonce gets to the bottom and completes the chorus, she kind of gives an acknowledgement to her backup singers and dancers. And then we get into the second verse, which is a bit more relaxed in the sense that Beyonce is looking around at the audience, but still making intense eye contact. Beyonce is very good at deliberate movements, like I've said. She doesn't sing with her eyes shut. She doesn't move her hand awkwardly. She doesn't sway back and forth. She performs each syllable with some deliberate move. Beyonce does does a one-time audience interaction where she lets them sing. She puts the microphone to the audience. Usually these moments are incredibly awkward. I think we've all been to a live set where the performer allows the audience to do a sing-along and or like a callback and sometimes it's incredibly awkward and it's not done very well. I also think what performers do that is unnecessary is let the audience sing for too long. I'm like, no, 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 give them one line and then move on. Like, don't... Don't let the audience get greedy because I feel like it takes away from the performance. Like I'm like, give the audience like one line where they can like jump in and have that moment in to interact. But I feel like too much of it, it's just, it's excessive. And then boom, chorus comes in. Let's talk about these backup dancers in this performance and every other performance, but specifically this one. Beyonce does not use her backup dancers as a crutch. They're not necessarily there to enhance the performance. Like Beyonce's already enhanced the performance herself. They are merely there to fill the stage because when you're on a really big stage, it can feel awkward performing a song like that without feeling the fullness of the stage, if that makes sense. Like if it was just her on the stage, it would feel a bit bare, it would feel a bit empty. And it would mean that she would have to work even more to like fill the the stage. And that just makes no sense from a, a performance sense. So having the backup dancers and backup singers, it, it just fills the stage more and it feels more full. But again, she doesn't rely on the dancers to enhance the performance because the way that Beyonce works with her backup dancers, you can tell is Beyonce is not doing what you usually see, right? Is the backup dancers will do the choreography like a hundred percent and the main performer will kind of do the choreography like to 50%. Like maybe there's still a lot of passion in it, but they're not doing the moves entirely the same way that the backup dancers are doing it. Beyonce, that's not the case. Like she is doing the moves and more. She does like a strut to the side of the stage with the backup dancers at one point and she is putting in just as much energy, if not more, as she struts a- across the stage. Then when she does these like chest pump movements across the stage, again, she's not just like doing the same energy as the backup dancers, she's doing even more than they are. Um, And I feel like this sets it up to be that she she wants to maintain that level of importance. She doesn't want to get lost in the crowd. She's staying number one. She's not doing things half-heartedly. She's maintaining that superiority on the stage. And as an audience member watching that, it's a godly experience because you're watching someone at such a high level perform that it's, it's almost untouchable. And that is really kind of breathtaking. And then we get into this crescendo of I'm looking so crazy and then she goes into this medley and um, mashup of CeeLo Green's song Crazy and 
she's like, who do you, who do you, who do you think you are? And it's just so brilliant. Like it just, the whole performance transcends at this point. And it's just the way she moves her head and becomes really robotic, but then also really crazy at this point. Like the way she's allowing her face and her expressions to kind of morph into the lyrics of being crazy in love is just brilliant. And you feel how strong her stance is on the stage at this point in contrast to when she's moving more fluidly on stage. Like you're really seeing that change in dynamic and she's doing at the as the song is like crescendoing the end like she's flipping her hair she's flailing her body she's doing all these like robotic robotic movements she does this air guitar at one point she gets on the ground at one point like she does all these like incredible vocal runs on the word crazy like she is losing her shit on stage but like still maintaining a high level of control and like it's just fucking brilliant. And as we come up to the end, she does these like four drop downs and jump ups with the like backup dancers, also known as like a slut drop, although that's kind of a fucked up dance move description. Um, <laughs> and at the end, she turns back and forth to the front and the back of the stage. And she then does this final move where she's like, facing the back but moves her head to the side looking back at the audience and she just does this lip sync of looking so crazy in love and she looks so calm and collected after doing this whole crazy outburst on stage of like showing how fucking in love she is and it's just it's it's the final cherry on top because she just looks so calm and collected at the end when she must be so out of breath, so exhausted, just like fucking needs to drop dead at this point. And it's just brilliant. And I, I love this performance. Please go watch it. Like, I just think it's just brilliant. And I have a lot of respect for that performance. <laughs> 